All right, so here are the five reasons, or at least the five biggest reasons, that Sandy scares me. First, we start with size matters, and this is an enormous storm. It's huge already, and it's likely to get bigger. This is the storm. Obviously, you can see it there, stretching up and down the eastern seaboard. A lot of this is high, thin cloudiness up over southern New England, but there it is. It's enormous, not much of an eastern side to the storm, but it will get wound up as it heads our way. And when we're here in southern New England on the uh, northeastern part of the storm, believe me, we'll know that there's a hurricane or post-tropical cyclone or an extra-tropical cyclone. We'll, we'll know that there was once a hurricane or whatever it is becoming uh, to our south as it heads inland into New Jersey. Uh, how big is the wind field for Sandy? Enormous. Second biggest since the 1980s, and it might uh, hit the top spot. So going back a long ways, have to, to find a, a, a storm as big as this one. This is the wind field. You've got tropical storm force winds stretching all the way up to Cape Hatteras and all the way down to the Bahamas. So a huge radius of tropical storm force winds. And then it brings with it this surge potential, which is a lot higher than you would get for a typical Category 1 hurricane. In fact, you can't see it here. We'll zoom in. The destructive potential rating on a 0 to 6 scale for the wind is only a 2.6 right now, as it's analyzed. And for the surge and waves, it's a 5.7 out of 6. A 5.7 out of 6, as analyzed on Saturday evening, as it's still uh, well south down around uh, 30 31 uh, north, so it is still way down there to our south, and this is a storm that's just uh, going to intensify a little bit, actually, before reaching the coastline. So wave model right here from a couple of days ago, but they still look the same. You get an idea. The brown shading, 22-foot waves are bigger, stretches for hundreds and hundreds of miles. Peak waves near the center of the storm to the east of the storm, over 50 feet. So you're talking about enormous waves, and a lot of this action is going to be heading straight for the southern New England coastline. Uh, one of the other reasons that I'm scared, talking about computer model consistency. You know, they're not identical, but you see all these tracks in here in the same area, and they've been that way now for, for a few days. So what we're seeing is a lot of computer models taking this thing into the Jersey Shore. It's most likely going to be around Atlantic City. So you're going to have Sandy meeting Monday night in Atlantic City with a lot of little Bruce Springsteen reference there. Fourth of July, Asbury Park, not this time around for Sandy. It's meet me tonight or Monday night in Atlantic City, and uh, that's probably where the storm is going to make landfall. Even if it's, if it's up around uh, Long Island, that means a lot as far as the surge is concerned. doesn't mean as much as far as the wind is concerned because of the way this wind field for this storm will be spreading out. And some of the peak winds from the storm, I'm telling you right now, are going to be in southern New England. If not, the strongest winds that Sandy produces will uh, – may well be in southern New England, particularly out in uh, eastern Massachusetts. Here's more on that computer model consistency. A friend of mine uh, putting this together, and uh, these are a lot of different models from the Canadian to the NAM, the no gaps, uh, the GFS, the European, all the models you've heard. They're all in the same spot, basically, uh, and, and you're kind of splitting hairs when you talk about uh, landfall here. So, and because the huge wind field is so huge, again, the uh, absolute, the, the actual landfall uh, doesn't mean as much. So, this is uh, the third reason why I am concerned uh, or scared a little bit by Sandy, and that is track, track, track of the storm. For the next day and a half, this is being recorded uh, about midnight going into Sunday, so about the next 24 almost 36 hours, it's going to be over some pretty warm water, over the jet stream, sucking it up, transitioning to extratropical or post-tropical, yes, but even extratropical and post-tropical cyclones like warm water. So uh, this is going to be a storm that will likely be intensifying uh, a little bit as it takes its turn to the northwest, and then it might be ramping up even more when it gets to the coastline. Notice how uh, many storms that we see up here in New England, tropical systems, they come up this direction, taking the long road over that cooler water. Not Sandy. Sandy's going to take the shortest road possible, practically, to get from the Gulf Stream to the coastline. Only thing shorter would have been to go into uh, the Chesapeake Bay. But Sandy takes a pretty short route, 
no land interaction as it moves across the the Gulf uh, from the Gulf Stream and into the Jersey coast. And this was uh, an earlier forecast from Saturday. It's probably going to move a little bit farther to the north with the actual uh, landfall. So you have this short path that Sandy takes across uh, the cooler water. And, it, and it, as a post-tropical cyclone, that's not going to matter as much. And then at the same time that Irene was heading our way, it had a central pressure in the 950-something, right around 90, 960 millibars. And that's what some of the computer models are projecting for Sandy. But it'll probably end up being lower than that. And uh, Irene was falling apart as it was moving up the coastline. It was in shambles as it came up the coastline. Uh, Sandy will be strong as it comes in from the northwest. It'll be strengthening right up until the point that it reaches the coastline. So rather than having a storm that's falling apart, you're going to have one that's strengthening, still maturing. So with the, with the strongest winds probably carried right out here in the northeastern part of the storm, and that's right over southern New England. And you, I wouldn't be surprised if there were if this storm made landfall in Atlantic City and the wind gusted to hurricane force up uh, on the north shore of Boston or even farther north into uh, the coast of Maine. Uh, one of the other things that uh, to be scared about with Sandy is that there's no analog. There is no uh, storm to look at and say, oh, yeah, well, this is going to be similar. And it definitely helps to when you can look at something and say, okay, that was pretty, that was uh, similar to. Uh, to what we're going to experience now. There's not much that's similar to Sandy, so it's sort of unchar uncharted uh, territory for us to be going into. Uh, southern New England impacts here, uh, we'll, we'll go through these. Again, with the storm making landfall here, talking 60 to 80 mile per hour winds uh, near the coast, 50 to 65 mile per hour inland winds, widespread power outages. The huge waves at the beach, maybe even higher than 18 feet, 20 to 40 foot waves offshore, major coastal flood threat, at least in a few spots, and including uh, one particularly vulnerable spot that we'll look at in just a minute. That's the next thing that I'm scared about with Sandy. And then the rain, not a huge factor. And this is with the Category 1 landfall somewhere on the Jersey Shore, like we're anticipating. This graphics uh, on rightweather.net. Okay, so it's the full hunter's moon is the next thing that has me scared. That is the full moon that's going to occur uh, on Monday. And right after the full moon is when you get some of your highest tide cycles. And it just happens to, the high tide happens to coincide with the timing on Sandy coming into uh, the Jersey Shore uh, or, or passing by. So the height of the storm is at high tide. You never want that. The wave forecast here is for 22 and a half feet from that spot right there. Stone's throw. A good drive. John DeLuca, my old buddy at Channel 6, if he hits a drive, it's probably going to land out here. Maybe, maybe even a three-wood. That's 22 and a half foot waves out there coming in from this direction. There's the Coast Guard house right in there. Been in contact with them on Twitter. They're boarding up tomorrow. I really hope that the, the restaurant is able to make it through the storm. They're very vulnerable right there on Narragansett Pier. High tides at 812. Winds will be screaming 60 to 75 miles an hour. Storm surge coming in at the same time, all compounded by the fact that it is a moon high tide cycle. And you can see that uh, right in here from the, the tide and the surge prediction for Newport. And a four plus foot surge, I've seen them as high as five from this slosh model. So maybe a five foot surge. By comparison in Newport, you had a three, just over three foot surge with uh, with with tropical storm Irene. And the last thing that has me a little bit scared is what I am calling silly semantics. You see those flags? You know what they are? Hurricane flags. And you're not going to see them flying hurricane warnings because you're not because the hurricane center has decided to not issue hurricane watches or warnings because the storm is becoming extra or post tropical. And they sent out a two page memo about it to the meteorologists that uh, you need a PhD to be able to decipher exactly what's going to happen. And the general public needs that as well. So I'm, I'm worried that people will say, oh, well, wait, no tropical storm warning, no hurricane warning, no big deal. We've got a high wind watch in effect. We can have those all the time. And it's true. <laughs> we have high wind watches and high wind warnings several times a year. But they need a new terminology. You need to go higher than a high wind warning uh, with, with something like this because the gusts, as we saw, are expected to be around 80 miles per hour. So I think that even though we were dealing, will be dealing with a post-tropical or extra-tropical cyclone, you still 
the Hurricane Center should have done the right thing or done the, done the best thing rather than the right thing. So they're saying, well, we don't want to talk about it as because it's not a hurricane. We don't want to confuse people. Well, people will be confused by saying, where are the warnings? I thought we were getting a tropical storm or a hurricane because that's what we've been talking about all week long. So my bottom line there is it's a hurricane that's heading our way. Uh, there will be hurricane force wind gusts in uh, southern New England and uh, at the coastline on the Cape and on the islands. And we need to prepare for that. So those are the five, or I might have snuck in an extra, six things that have me scared about Hurricane Sandy.